But has Jeopardy always been your favorite game show? Because you're on The Chase as well, I believe. Yeah, um, well, you know, The Chase didn't exist when I was a kid. Uh, Jeopardy, of course, has been around forever, and it was the one I watched as a kid and said, hey, this, this you know, would be something that would be really fun to do when I'm growing up. So as soon as I introduced the online test, I think it was in 2006, uh, I took it every year and, you know, kind of dreamed of this moment, although, honestly, I'm playing better than I ever thought I could have, so it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm sure you get this question a lot. Everybody that goes on there, you got people that are lawyers, you got doctors, you got counselors, you got people who have all been to school for a long time. You decided to be a professional sports gambler. And why is that? How is that? And how was that career for you? Is that something you'll go back to doing after this dominance of Jeopardy? So when I was a kid, I remember telling my dad, I would have been about 13, I think when this conversation happened, that I wish there were a stock market for sports teams because I thought that I could trade those for a living and you know it didn't occur to me until i would turn 21 and looked at the sports betting marketplace and how vast it is that this you know sort of concept really exists in the real world and uh, i was already at a point in my life where i was doing mathematical analysis on like who's going to win the world series this year oh it's going to be the yankees 15 percent of the time that sort of stuff anyway so you know i thought making some money doing it was a no-brainer uh, I will say I ran pretty good the first year I was gambling, and if I hadn't had that uh, boost of confidence right away, I might have gone, entered the corporate world. But I've never had to so far. Uh, I certainly foresee myself. I have taken a couple months off to deal with everything else that's going on. Deal. But I definitely think I'll be back for football season and hockey and basketball and all that. What's a bad beat for you? Like, do you, um, I've never really talked to a professional sports gambler that wasn't just a complete liar about the amount of money that they gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody on the internet that talks about sports gambling talks about, uh, I'm betting $275,000 tonight on the under in the first quarter. It's like, no, you're not. You're not doing that. <laughs> but you, I believe, as a actual, it seems as if you're a well calculated, uh, cerebral sports gambler. What is like uh, the standard operation there? And will you utilize this Jeopardy win? to kind of go take over Vegas even more? Take over Vegas. Well, you know, they got house limits I have to run into here and <laughs> in a lot of places have decided they, you know, well prior to the Jeopardy run that they don't want to deal with uh, me because I'm winning too much of their Ooh. money. Oh, wait, you've been, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. hey, you been banned from casinos already in sports books? Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, Which one? Yes. That is so awesome. <laughs> Well, it's only awesome if you don't have to uh, worry about where your next paycheck's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> True, but like those 21 kids getting run out of those casinos. Right. I'm, thinking oh. of, I'm thinking of you with like your iPhone calculator out like, yep. Oh, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. Yeah, you know what I want. <laughs> Give me all of it. And they're like, uh, sir, get you and your fucking calculator out of here. Um, that's incredible. Can you tell us which places have refused to do sports business with you anymore? Uh, for, for example, like William Hill, they're uh, the conglomerate that operates like, I don't know, 40 places around Nevada to bet at. They, they have a well-known policy of kicking out anyone who's a long-term winner. So they are, I think, the first ones to get rid of me. Uh, Cancer Gaming, they're another one of these conglomerates. They, they booted me. Yeah, it's a bunch <laughs> of uh, isolated ones. Are you 100% focused on Jeopardy right now? Is this uh, full-time? This is what we're trying to do for the, at least the next couple months, I guess? I mean, I, that's a wild thing to say. Uh, well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I mean, I'm not working, but I have a four-year-old kid, so that's a full-time job right there. And uh, we just took a vacation to Sicily for a few weeks to kind of clear my head. That was good, I think. Okay, so when you go to Sicily, uh, there's like museums and shit over there. Do you look around and just pick up little facts just in case <laughs> it pops up? There were some, yeah. I, uh, I'm not sure how useful any of it's going to be, but I mean, you know, if I'm at a museum and enjoying myself anyway, I might think, huh, I could file that away, make a profit off it someday. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mafia talk down there in Sicily. Man. Oh, yeah. Italians yeah. get wild down there. Yeah, we were we were at a uh, kebab shop there, and uh, some individual came out and said something to the owner, and the owner came out with a, a bag of money to give uh, to that person. So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, nothing to see here, James. Nothing to see here. Can you send me? Can you think you can email maybe like your best model? I assume you've created a bunch of gambling models. Yeah. Do what do you have? Do you have a bunch of? Do you just punch a bunch of things into a database? You seem like a very statistic and uh, organized, like that type of operation over there. There is. Uh, I mean, there's definitely models in play, but you you got to really kind of synthesize everything you know. Uh, you know, one of the th tricky things is there's so much to learn about sports betting, and unless you have a friend who uh, happens to be a sports betting pro, nobody out there is going to teach it to you because you become their competition once you're good at this sort of thing. Uh, luckily, you know, I, I knew some people who I uh, did some consulting for 
years back, and they taught me some important stuff about that sort of thing. Sports gambling is about to become nationally legalized. It's, we're right on the the brink of it happening. It's already happening in states that it happened in Indiana. Nobody, Indiana's behind on everything. So as soon as that happens, I feel like that's kind of a gateway to everybody else. You doing what you're doing on Jeopardy amongst other professions like best in crushing them is doing sports gambling such a positive PR spin. I, I, I don't know if you've been thanked by the sports gambling people, but you should be. I don't even know who they are, but they should be thanking you. Yeah, I have done a few interviews with sites that are kind of proponents of the spread of legal gambling, and I think it's really cool. You know, it's a big time in our industry. You know, if I can be of some help in putting a good face on it, that's great. Well, because I think the Italians kind of had a kind of a a headlock on the sports gambling world. When people thought of sports gambling, they thought of uh, old, old big time Tommy down there at, uh, at the corner running a book. You know what I mean? And now sports gamblers finest is representing on the smartest show on earth. I mean, it's, it's only good things, especially with it coming into legalization here soon. Like for instance, when marijuana is about to be legalized nationally, if some pothead gets on jeopardy and just runs the table, that'd be great for marijuana. Do you know who uh, Dan Bilzerian is? Oh Yeah. Yeah, so my poker playing friends tell me their uh, their parents used to, or sorry, friends of their parents or whoever used to hear, oh, you're a pro poker player. Do you know Dan Bilzerian? And now they say, oh, you're a pro gambler. Do you know James Holtzauer? <laughs> <laughs> they seem to think it's a better uh, spin. Hey, you're, yeah. you are the exact same as Dan Bilzerian, too. Now that I've sat down, I've kind of... <laughs> sure. 